Thanks. Yes, good morning. My name is Shashi Menon, Chairman of the Council on Aging Board. This is our monthly meeting for the month of May with the, uh, the director of the COA board, COA department. So let me go around and just introduce yourself. I've got Holly here, who's chairman and who's the director of the department. Um, we've got, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm trying to remember everyone's names. I'm Jean Campanello. Yes. Um, Lori. Lori Jones. Renee Dutch, Angelo Outreach Coordinator. Alex Roman. Hi, Judy Goodstein, board member. Louise Russell. Betsy Zawick. Well, the meeting is now called to order. Uh, the first, uh, first item on the agenda is to review and accept the April 2022 20, minutes. If anyone has any questions or comments, do so now. Any questions or comments from anyone? I have a question. Go ahead. I was in that meeting. Um, there, was a, there was an agenda item for the meeting um, about the scholarship for either a high school student or a senior. And that's not reflected in the minutes, so I was wondering what happened with that. Okay. I wasn't here last a month because I was on vacation. So even though it was on the agenda, it, um, Christine didn't feel as though she had enough information to talk about it. So okay. we will be talking about that in the future. Okay, uh, does this require any update to the menu minutes itself? I don't think no, it does. No, just, no. This is just a related question. Point of information. Before, we, uh, before we go any further, I want to remind everyone that we are trying to obey Robert's rules. Please raise your hand if you want to speak and wait for the chair to identify you. The other thing is I realized watching committee meetings on television that we are on television. And because of that, you have to speak a little bit slower and articulate because a lot of times I can't understand what people are saying. And you have to rewind the tape and listen to it again. What did he just say? Because they speak so fast. So those are the two things that I'd like you to keep in mind to speak slowly and enunciate your words so everyone understands what you're saying in the recording. Go ahead, Louise. I move that we accept the minutes of April 13th. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting is, um, the minutes are approved. The next item on the agenda is the Friends of the Shrewsbury Senior Center attendance at monthly meetings. I have no information about this. I have not heard anything from them. I mean, does anyone want to comment on that? What have you decided we're going to do? Go ahead. Um, after speaking with town management, the friends of the senior center are allowed to attend each meeting that we have. We can um, give them a certain time allotment. So it could be five minutes, it could be 15 minutes. I recommend to the board to allow 15 minutes because they are our only supporter of our events at this time, um, right outside of the senior center, not counting our partnerships. And from what I have been um, informed of, this does not need to go to a vote. Yes, as far as I understand it, the open meeting law permits that. The only thing that they need to do, whoever they send, is to ask the, address the chair and say, do you want permission to speak? And that's all they have to do, they, with the understanding that they cannot vote. That. <coughs> Louise. Has, has this been presented to the press of the Friends of Friends? I presented it a week ago or two weeks ago to Maria and the rest of the, well, the board that was present, including yourself. I mean, was there any discussion separately other than the presentation you made in the board? Other than you bringing it to the COA board's attention, that, that was the conversation. Um, for, the, for the newbies, program, um, we had a discussion, I think it was uh, several months ago. Uh, it was a policy. Not a policy, written policy, but it was practice, I guess, 
uh, for years and years at the friends of the senior center, who are, should be very close partners with the CLA. They're not the same, not the two same entities. They're all, not one entity, they're two separate entities, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, it's always been the practice that a representative from the friends come to the board meetings of the CLA and the CLA representative go to the board of the friends to keep their communication lines open and suggestions and practices of what is happening and how finances of the friends of the senior center or the fundraisers for the council on aging because the council is not allowed to raise funds for itself. So for 20 five years um, the friends have been doing that. So um, I, I was at president at the, at the meeting at the board of the friends and uh, Holly just mentioned that they, you know, could come. But there was never a discussion. And we had discussed it here before about why we wanted them here, what would be the reason for them to come, what would be the time frame and all those kind of things. And that discussion was never um, how would we say finalized, uh, <laughs> Louis, I guess. Louise, yes. uh, stay focused on what we're doing. Yes. The other thing is how, how are we going to communicate? Are you going to communicate with the friends that want it? they can send a representative? How are they going to know that they're welcome? They have been told. Mm -hmm. So they have already been notified that they can send a representative to our monthly meeting. So there's nothing more to be decided or voted upon here. Is that correct? Go ahead. That is correct. Um, so we have talked about it frequently, about having the friends be part of our agenda meeting so they can relay the information that they're doing for the senior center. And we had discussed this, and I did a little bit of investigation talked with my supervisors and they had mentioned that they that this had been done in the past and that they welcomed it to come back in the future and that it's not something that needs to be voted upon and I after finding out that information I did quickly email um, both Louise Maria Smith who is the president of friends and Shashi I did um, CCU also on that email. Yes. Did. Go ahead. Um, Will they be, <clears throat> there's a difference between just being present and being active. Will they be on the agenda as giving us an update at each meeting, or? Well, they had requested something like that, that yeah, they want to yeah. talk about their activities, because a lot, of, a lot of us do not know exactly what they do. Am I right, Louise? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, to um, me, I have not had a discussion between the two groups, and I think that's what, you know, we talk and they talk, but there's never been, to, as far as I know, a discussion between the two groups, either between Holly and, and Maria or, or any of us. Jean? I would think that if there were issues that the friends wanted to present to the board, look at the chain. If there were issues that the <coughs> friends wanted to present to the board, Maria should be in touch with Holly and say, could we talk about this at our next meeting? So I should put it on the agenda. But I don't know if it has to be on every single meeting that they have to meet on the agenda with an item. Go ahead, Lauren. So one of the things I want to make sure that people understand about the Friends of the Senior Center. So when we receive our general fund budget each year, that doesn't include any kind of activities, programs, or events. We don't have money that comes from the town for those things. That is the purpose of the Senior Center, the Friends of the Senior Center. So the purpose of them coming to each agenda meeting is to show us what they're bringing in every single month for events. And on another note, we should be able to go and request from them any additional funds that we might have, say, for the 22nd celebration that we're talking about in September, or if we're doing another fund. Because as um, Louise mentioned earlier, we are not allowed to fundraise. As a municipal 
uh, department. We are not allowed to do that. So that is where we depend on the friends coming in. So they come in and they have their luncheons and they do their bingo games and they do their movies and they do, um, Maria's just like knocked it out of the park with all of the things that she has brought to the table. And if that, if that group doesn't, isn't acknowledged, because this is their opportunity to have that little bit of advertising marketing, which I want to completely support 100%. So what I did say to Maria um, is that if she couldn't find a board member that could come each month and you know be on the monthly agenda, that perhaps she could talk with Louise, as Louise is a member of the COA board, to talk about the events that are happening. So people are aware. Because what I do when we meet here and we talk about programs, I talk about the programs that I'm doing. But I don't want to not acknowledge the work that's going into the Friends Up group at the same time. So I feel as though that the Friends Up should be able to be allowed to come here, and if they're not, be here, since Louise is on the board, to be that person, that voice for the Friends Up. So that's, that's, that's how I feel about that. Judy? <clears throat> Should we designate Louise as our liaison to the friends? Don't think so. Uh, no side discussions, please. <laughs> I didn't think that was a side discussion. No, no. <laughs> I, I don't think Louise wants to take on that responsibility. And I think I think that the board, the the their board board of the friends should send someone they feel. I don't think we should simply dump it on her lap. I, okay, so. should we designate if their board is um, I think Jean was first. Jean, you had a, you something someone? to say? Yeah. Did you want to say something? No. no. Alice, go ahead. Should, should this board, de sorry Louise, should this board designate someone then as, as a liaison? If their board is designating someone, should um, this board designate someone? That's would, is question. this something that you would want to do? Is have a permanent representative on the Friends, I mean, it just so happens that Louise is on both committees. I, I, I take back the suggestion about Louise, and I change my question to. But what I'm saying Does is, this board want to designate someone as a liaison to the Friends, well, so that if their board member wants to speak to a board member, they have someone to come. We can discuss that. We can take a vote on that. Go ahead. I think that um, we've made the accommodation that we'll give them time on our agenda every month, and now it will be up to the friends to decide who will provide that information I thought to us. At that was my understanding. That was my understanding as well, and I think that's what Holly explained to us. Lori? I guess I would be a little concerned about a member then not that we couldn't represent the whole board, but I also always think of Holly as the one who is in touch with everything that's going on in the center as opposed to, I mean, I am new, so I'm not even playing catch up. Um, but having someone designated, I would think would go and listen and if asked questions about what activities, if we know the answer, we could answer. But I think that Holly's the one who knows pretty much everything. Well, if that's the case, then would Holly want to attend your meetings? I don't know that she does. I mean, I can't impose on that any one way or another. Go ahead. So I think it would be, and I know that Alex is waiting, um, I think it would be fair that if there isn't somebody that wants, that is able to show up from the Friends of, and if Louise is not comfortable with that position, I can simply talk about the things that I know, um, and we can go from there. But I would hope that, so, that somebody from the Friends would come and represent all of the fantastic things that they're doing. So I think what needs to happen is we need to talk to the Friends and make them understand the importance of them being here once a month to talk about the things that they're doing. Alex? Well, and I, my concern would be not to confuse the roles of a board member with a, a role with the friends. Um, and I need to give a little more thought to it. And, and I suggest that we do that as a group uh, or subject to some advice from uh, Holly, as to how to separate the roles and if they need to be separated. I'm a little confused now. I think we're talking about two things. We're talking about a representative from the Friends coming to the board meeting on a regular basis and 
introducing to us what their activities are. But I think I'm also hearing we need someone to say a board member from our board should be the liaison to the friends meetings. In, in a nutshell, I think it, we should really ask the question, what is the best way for us to communicate with each other? That is, that is the crux of the problem. And right now, I think we have made this available, these opening 10 minutes, and I think we should communicate that to them. I think you already have, have you not? Oh, you're, did, did I'm you, sorry, I didn't hear my name. Yes, yes. Did, did you communicate to them that the 10 minutes are available, 15 minutes? Every month. Yeah, they know that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that any further action is required. Now that we've, if they come back and say, well, we cannot get people, can you do, well, at that point, we have to make another decision. But for right now, we're done. Any questions or comments? No? So we can move on to the next topic, which is the review of the financial reports. I understand it's only the gift fund this month because yeah, go ahead. So I'm sorry. So there is an FY22 budget summary uh, page that should look something like this. So Christine is out on vacation, a well-deserved vacation. So uh, we just thought it while she was wrapping up some of the loose ends, what we'll do for the month of May is talk about the ending balances for the accounts we have. The gift fund is actually a whole different topic outside of the financial reports. Um, and then when Christine comes back next next month uh, for the agenda meeting, she'll give a better detailed report. Um, so if you all wouldn't mind following me around, I'm just going to talk about the FY22 budget summary on the top of the paper and talk about all of the grants. So as of right now, the formula grant has a remaining balance of $40,726.21. The DOT grant has a remaining balance of $330.47. The taxi livery grant is $10,930.51. However, just while we're talking, I wanted to let everybody know that um, April was our biggest month as far as sending out rides, and we're now down to about $200. So what I have asked from the staff is to make sure everybody understands that that tax delivery grant has now been spent because I did not want to go over. I'd rather give a couple hundred dollars back than have to go over on anything like that. Um, but just so the board is aware, we are in the process of um, writing another grant that will be able to, to do the same thing for us. So just to continue, the gift fund has a balance of $20,103.11. The revolving account has $31,418.08. And the general fund has $11,502.06. Now, I know there are a lot of accounts here, and they can get rather confusing. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd just like to spend a minute just to talk about a couple of them. So for the formula grant, you can see the amount remaining, and this was when we took this in the end of April, $40,726.21. Now, part of that grant money that's left over is for salaries for Christine and both of our, 100% uh, for our full-time, uh, I mean our part-time, workers, so Pat Babin and Donna Messier. So we still have the month of May and the month of June to go through, as well as doing catch up for the expenses that we um, had for the volunteer luncheon because that all comes out too, okay? So the DOT grant, this is again um, from the end of April and since then I believe we have approximately $50 left in that. So. That's, that's pretty much done. The taxi livery grant, as I just mentioned, we just have a couple of hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and this will show better um, in next month's report just because we have to, we rely on the invoices from Yellow Cab and Safeway Luxury Transportations to send us those invoices so we can update. The gift fund, so the $20,103.11, 
So I can tell you that since this was um, printed for us for this meeting, we have received multiple and in some cases large donations um, to the Senior Center, which will also be updated um, for the month of June. The revolving account, let me explain to you where the revolving account money comes from. So we receive money from the Shrewsbury Housing Authority that, so we, we take those riders and we bring them to the doctor's appointments and we bring them to the market and medical appointments and everything else like that and side trips. So we do fun things. So we're, you know, we did the um, tree lighting and the house lights and we bring them to the Big E, we do ice cream and we do things like that. The reason why this account right now is as high as it is is because we haven't accepted any fares since 2000, well, since the beginning, the first month, I guess, of 2020, which is why that um, account is a little higher than what we're used to seeing. Um, but we're seeing transportation requests come up a lot. So um, we're expecting that that account will start to be used a little bit more frequently. And then the general fund, as everybody knows, the general fund, those operating expenses come from what is voted from the town. Um, so those are salaries, salaries, um, operating expenses, and things like that. Um, does anybody have any questions for me pertaining? Luis? The uh, general fund, that, that can't be held over, can it? No, the general fund, whatever we don't use, goes back to the town. Yep. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. My question has to do with when you rewrite a grant, mm -hmm. what is the lead time for writing it and then also getting it submitted and how long do you have to wait to have a decision and receive the money? So each grant is completely different. Sometimes, you know, some organizations find extra money and they're looking for positive ways to spend it. But in most cases, we have approximately a month and a half to put the grant into writing and then submit it. And then it's usually about a month that we hear if we receive the grant. Sometimes it's longer. So it's really, it really completely depends on the grant and which organization is doing it. But typically that's about how it works. A follow up, uh, how, how frequently has it been denied or accepted? Is it accepted? Once you write a grant, or do you, have you had denials? Uh, so we have had denials before, um, and some of the purposes would be, um, like I'll give you for instance. So for fiscal year 2023 going in, okay, not the ones that I'm applying for, the ones that we've been awarded for fiscal year 23. So we received a WRTA grant matching funds for $56,000. So $28,000 comes from the town of Shrewsbury, and then we get $28,000 from them, okay? So this is for operating expenses for our transportation. I've been on many meetings with them, many phone discussions, many one-to-ones, and one of the things that, what they wanted me to understand is that there's a, thousand COAs and senior centers in Massachusetts that may be applying for the same thing. So we may not always get that operating expense grant. So they expect us to be a little creative and things like that. Um, but there are other opportunities because of COVID that we have other like mass development, um, MRPC, that come out with opportunities for us to apply for those same grants. So one of the things, and I'm a, I'm a huge, I never like to see a grant go past my table without somebody in my staff participating in it. So if we get denied for one, we try to get the other. So there's no guarantee, obviously, for, for any of them. We have been denied from AARP before, but I currently also have an AARP grant waiting for a response back. So it's all, it, it fluctuates. I guess it depends on who, who applies for those grants. Yeah, you're welcome. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, I didn't go back and look at previous month's budget reports, so maybe it's in there, but I can't tell from these numbers, and I recognize they're line item totals. Mm -hmm. uh, 
are we, we've gone through the end of April is about 83% of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Doing my math in my head correctly. Mm -hmm. Correct. So are we trending at or under budget? Are we, and so that would be one, because I recognize mm -hmm. overall we can't go over. Right. Um, secondly, um, what do we do if we run out of money in the DOT line and the taxi delivery? So let me explain the DOT grant, if I may. The DOT grant has actually been in there since even before I, I came here in 2020. So as I mentioned before, there is this there's less dollars than what are shown here. So we'll end up closing out that account. However, what, we not, what we're trying not to do is close it out completely because we're gonna be reopening it because we just got accepted for the $56,000 DOT grant. So we'll, keep, we'll end up keeping that open. Now, as your comment for the general fund, we are on, we are on track for that. Um, we are actually a little bit above, and the reason being for the above is that we were paying stipends for the elder services of Worcester for the Meals on Wheels drivers. So we had approximately $5,000 set aside for those drivers to earn $5 a route for their, their work that they do. Since then, in the last two months, Elder Services has decided that they want to pay the drivers um, for their miles reimbursed. And in which case, there is state rules that you can't double dip, if you will, so they can't accept a stipend and get uh, the miles reimbursed. So there will be some extra funds available for there. Uh, just so the board is aware, what I'm expecting to do with any funds left over is use them for marketing expenses. So printing up new brochures, printing up our, you know, extra, um, the door hangers for our resources and things like that, things for outreach because printing is just a, a, an obscene amount of money when it comes down to the end. But that's what I'm, that's my plan to do with any leftover funds. Not that I want to give money back to the town, but we have uses for them. Any other questions? Uh, go ahead, Holly. Um, so. Renee. Oh. We're done with the gift fund. Well, well, no. So that okay. was the general overall budget. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to move right to the gift fund. Um, so it was asked by us to show the last five years of how the gift fund has been spent. And so Christine and I sat down and we worked on a model, um, a graph model, to show where those expenses, what it looked like in 2018, 2019, 2020, and et cetera. So what we were trying to do is, I wanted to make sure, especially for um, some of the new board members, could understand where we were going. So the graph that you see will, shows the monies that were spent and for what purposes at the very bottom. And without going any further, I think it explains itself, but I just welcome any questions if the board has any. What page is that? Uh, so it should look like, so it, this should be the top, and then it should go to here. So this, uh, here, you can take mine. Is it in this one? Okay, I apologize. Did you? Here you go. Okay. You, can, you, can have, you can have that one. I, I, yeah, I had it on. Oh. That's right. So I think Jean had a question. Gotcha. Thank you. So, <coughs> I had had some questions about the gift fund. When I spoke to Christine, she told me that there was a draft. Can you speak a little louder? I can't hear you. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, I had talked to Christine about the draft. Uh, she told me there was a draft that was prepared in um, September 18 by the board, but it never went further than a draft, and it identifies in the draft the um, subcategories and examples of, of spending. What it does not address are the parameters for spending and whether we need to look at, do we maintain a certain residual amount in the account? Do we spend related to income? 
So those are the questions I wanted to, to present and ask uh, for feedback now. And also to look at whether we need to do something about accepting this draft as a formal piece of the board's um, database so that we know a little bit more about the gift fund. So before we get any further into talking about the gift fund, I want to I want to tell everybody about a little conversation that happened in my first five months here. So I started here in January 2020 and as everybody knows about St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, um, the, you know, basically the light closed down. When we started to come back to life in July, I received a phone call from a person in Shrewsbury and they wanted to talk to me about making a big donation and he said but I need to talk to you he's like we're not going to go over email da, da, da. so we actually met outside because he couldn't come into the senior center and one of the things he said was I have a check in my lap tell me why you deserve it okay and so I explained to him all of the things that I felt like I was going to do his response to me was that money never moves. He's like, and I have money to give. Our family has money to give. Tell me what you are going to do. So we sat there for about 45 minutes and I explained to him the goals that I had for the senior center and for the council and aging department. And also not even understanding what COVID was even going to possibly even bring. And by the end of our conversation, he handed me the check. And since then, as the graph shows, that there was very little donations prior to my arrival. Not, I'm not saying that this was you know, to do with anybody else, but I am literally talking about just my time since I've been here for 2020, that yes, we have expended money because it was necessary. The senior center wasn't open. We weren't having any programs. There were people that were isolated at home. There were things that people needed, things to make people feel better. The gifts for seniors that we did, we sent out almost 550 bags. Every single housing authority resident received a Christmas bag. And then there was our transportation people and the people from Meals on Wheels. So I look at this and yes, we, we, we did spend money, but I feel like it was necessary money. And also keep in mind, none of our accounts accrue interest, none of them. So they, it just sits there. So now that people are seeing money being spent, you can see that the, the revenue that we're taking in is, it might not match it, but we have people in Shrewsbury, we have almost, we have almost 10,000 seniors that are in town that have utilized in, as you can see on that second page, the amount of work that myself, the staff, the board, our volunteers, everybody has given and the things that we've been able to give in a time that we weren't even sure how we were gonna get out of it. So I personally am super excited about all of the things that COA department as a whole and the Senior Center has been able to bring in the last two and a half years since I've been here. I understand about not wanting to deplete the fund and I have no, I have no um, quorums about that. I completely agree because there could be an emergency. There could be a van that breaks down that we need to buy a new van or whatever it is. But for this time frame, I think that the things that have been done is important. Now I, I'm guessing that the question might be is how are we going to keep getting the funds? We're going to keep getting the funds and the donations because people are going to see us. We're going to, they're going to see us through our marketing plan. They're going to see us through the cards that we send out every single week to various amount of people. They're going to see us through um, the conversations that we have in our groups and in, you know, when we're out to lunch. So I just, wanted to, I just wanted to put all of that out there, but I still welcome any questions or anything. Uh, I don't have a question, Holly, actually, but I have an observation. I think the really dramatic increase in the support to seniors in Shrewsbury is something that we as the COA should be really proud of. I mean, look at what we're doing for people now. And I would question, what would you eliminate? What, how would you explain that to people if we've offered it? Um, so I think it's terrific that we're doing this. Thank you. Renee? Yes, hi. Um, so I think when people make donations, they expect that we're going to use those donations to serve seniors. And I can speak for the, um, the small home repair in particular. 
It's a very popular program. It's actually um, tripled since I've been here. Of course, COVID put a damper on, on that in the previous year. Um, so there's a lot of need out there. And it's amazing um, the donations that we have received just for that program. People really appreciate it. Louise? I just had a couple of questions. Um, is that where the 13,000 came from, with all donations? Yes. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. that's really true. I just wanted to say um, in the, this chart that back when it shows not much expenditure, a lot of that money came from the friends. The friends were asked to do an awful lot, and they did. They did. <coughs> just simple things like, uh, you know, making <coughs> keeping the clock going, and tuning the piano, uh, felting the pool table, uh, cleaning the furniture, cleaning the rugs. I mean, all those kinds of expenditures that the friends paid for because the COA asked the friends to do that. And I think in that way, I think a lot of these things, if once we build up that rapport, hopefully with the friends again, then we can go to the friends because they do have money. They're constantly fundraising. And that way that we can maybe sustain the gift fund by going out, out and getting funds where they are available through the friends. So I think, you know, that um, it shows here, you know, how much money was spent but not out of the gift fund, but out of another resource that we have for us to get. Um, I yes. just had... Um, Renee, oh, are you done? I just had a, a question in these expenses. Do we have a total for the Memory Cafe? I know every year uh, we vote to give them 4000 Have we ever had a total of expenditures? Do we? Um, so, we, since COVID, if you remember, originally it was 4,000, we brought it back down to 2,000. And usually what happens is when the ladies that run the Memory Cafe program, if they're paying for entertainment or food or anything like that, they go to the friends to be more immediately reimbursed. Um, and then we go back and we reimburse the friends group because it's technically a senior center council on aging group. Um, I can ask Christine to get where we are with the total, uh, but keep in mind, starting in July, we may, I would request from the board to think about bringing it back up to $4,000 because what we're trying to do is really increase that program and to collaborate with the library whose program also works really, really well. So I can get those, I will get those numbers for you for the Memory Cafe, where, what they've expended so far for fiscal year 22. And then at that same time, I would ask that the board revisit the fiscal year 23 to see if we can give them additional funds. Renee? Thank you. Yeah, um, and uh, the friends have um, recently um, committed to do a donation for the walking challenge. The walking challenge is the um, Mass Council on Aging. They do that um, each year to try to encourage seniors to get out and get moving. And they have, um, decided to donate um, one of the raffle items, which would be a Fitbit for those who complete their walking challenges. And we also receive sometimes in-kind donations, and one of those is from Joe Fish. He's actually, another raffle item he's gonna donate is um, a fitness package of, um, of a mat and different kinds of exercise equipment to encourage seniors to, you know, to con continue to stay active, so, yeah. Um, before we leave this topic, I have an observation. I'll put this on the table and we can talk about it. Is anyone here know whether we are in checking out donations against the conflict of interest law? In other words, we have to make sure that it's not politically motivated. We have to make sure that the person who makes the donation is not getting, is not somebody who provides services to the, to the COA. Those kinds of things have to be checked. Go ahead. So that would be on me. And to date, there is nothing like that. So when somebody makes a donation, um, 
and you know you got the little line item that says memo because it's, it's always in a check most most of the time if they don't put anything we will call to just say do you want it for a general fund so we can spend it as the coa needs or do you want it to go to specific nine out of ten times it's usually a general and then what we do is we follow up with a thank you card that goes from <laughs> us to them and the card can actually be used at, at like at the next event but we have not received any any donations that would be for anything that would be political or anything like that. I mean, it's good that you are, but I feel that this document, uh, the categories uh, and so on, and as well as the compliance with the with the uh, conflict of interest law, should really be made into a policy document of some kind. Go ahead. Shashi, I think you're talking about the, the agenda for... Oh, am I jumping? Yes. Back? So we All were right. just finishing up talking about Go the ahead. gift fund. Yeah, that's right. You're right. Go ahead. Go on. Um, so I don't have anything else about the gift fund. I don't know if anybody else does. Jean? My concern is that this piece, the, the policy, not the policy, the statement that was created um, in 18 is still in draft form. And do we need to well, do something about... Excuse me, but I think she said just said that. We're going to get back to that later in the pro... Because I was jumping the gun. I no, so We're talking about the funds. Right. Itself. We're not talking about these guidelines yet. Isn't that right? So I don't have the guidelines on the agenda to discuss because that's a completely different agenda item. I do understand what Jean is saying because we have had many conversations, if you remember, that prior to my arrival, there, when things were donated into the gift fund, they weren't specified where they were going. And we have done a lot of research to try to figure out where that money had come from. Now you'll see with Christine's expertise, if you will, um, every time we receive a donation, it says, where is it going to go? So what I believe that the conversation that was, I, I don't know, months ago, was that any of those remaining balances, whatever it was, we would split into a quarter. We'd do outreach and nutrition program and those kind of services wherever it was needed and utilize them like that. I do agree that I, I believe that there should be something that says how do you spend it? And that's what we're trying to do on our end. So when those checks come in, we follow up with those people that don't put in the memo that is for memory cafe or small home repair. And if they say general, general means we can use it wherever the senior center or council and aging department needs those funds. If they say small home repair, that's completely different. Now, if you want to see what each one of those services are bringing in, I can work with Christine so you can see how much money is, so and it's going to be separate from the main balance of the gift fund. You can, you can see where the small home repair money, like how much is in there. Um, and since we've been really taking a better look at it, because I, I would hope that the, the older board can, you know, um, agree, is that we've been keeping a better track of where that money is supposed to be spent, nutrition program, transportation, things like that. All right. I, I still, yeah. <laughs> this, this, whatever it is, the Council on Aging gift account guidelines. Mm -hmm. The guidelines is a draft. We should not allow it to continue as a draft. It either should be voted on as uh, a guideline, as in its current form, or we should address it make some changes and resubmit it as a new guideline. But a draft isn't appropriate to sustain the use of the funds, I don't think. Jean, I think what Holly was saying before is that right now we're only talking about the gift fund. Yes. What's in there. Yes. She, there is no agenda item to discuss this document yet. So yes, we do need to discuss it, but whether it's going to be at this meeting or some future meeting remains to be seen. Go ahead. Um, can we make a note, to please add that to the agenda for the next meeting? You want to make a motion to do? To, to add that to the, it doesn't need to be a motion. Can you we mean, please add that to the agenda for the next meeting? Mean, uh, yeah. Of course. Okay. 
Okay. Anybody want to second that? The motion is that we add. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jean. I second. You second it. Okay. Go ahead. Point of discussion then. Um, if we could have the document in advance, and not just two days in advance of the meeting, because um, I'm curious to see if it includes uh, any items of process, like making sure or documenting that you convey to the donor the conflict of interest law, or you know, a staff member signs off that they explain that. I, it seems there may need to be some legal review. That's why I, I suggested earlier on that this really ought to be folded into a policy document. Perfect. But I think that's what the proposal is essentially saying. We schedule this as a line item for a future meeting where we will discuss this document and what to do about it. Yeah. Correct? Yes. We're and that she's been seconded. Yeah. All in favor? Yes. All right. Any opposed? Motion is carried. So we will add this to a future <coughs> item for a, for a future June. meeting. Shashi, may I just say something? Um, because we had to move out of the town hall um, today because of conflict um, with the school committee, I do have to ask that our meeting today ends at the latest 1050 because we do have a program running at 11. Okay, so I just wanted to let everybody know at 1050 because I'll have to break down the tables um, and whatever we don't finish on the agenda today, we could put on the agenda for the month of June. All right, so moving along, the Renee, you're on. Okay. Hi, good morning. Um, so, um, you know, April April uh, 1st was the finish of Share the Warmth applications. We had um, 29 applications for Share the Warmth. And um, for fuel assistance, we had 43 applications that ended April 30th. Um, I assisted a lot of people with, uh, with their renewals as well. Um, people have difficulty getting their paperwork together and helping them understand that. Um, AARP was here, as everybody knows, to help with um, residents' taxes. And um, I spoke to um, a few residents who um, weren't aware of some of the, um, the uh, property tax exemptions, and I think that that would be a good future program to have. I, I believe the assessor's office was holding some programs as well, but um, we should probably um, anticipate and have a little bit more um, going on in the fall in that respect, um, as well as Excuse making- Excuse me, Renee. I have a question before you go get too sure. far into your report. You mentioned AARP. Now, AARP is a commercial operation, is it not? It's a nonprofit. Operation. But they are a dot com, as far as I know. They get investments, they advertise, they do, they are run as a commercial. So is there any conflict of interest here? No, there isn't. No, they, they, they provide free tax assistance through volunteers mm -hmm. who are trained. Mm -hmm. And um, their training is updated each year. And this is done all across the country. And so they coordinate with councils on aging and other organizations to be able to provide that service. And they do that um, regionally as well. Okay. So, um, and I think, and I've made um, a couple of people aware that who don't file their taxes, because not a lot of seniors file their taxes. They don't, um, you know, there isn't really a need to do that because they don't have working income. However, um, for the, um, uh, for the circuit breaker program to reduce your property taxes, you need to file your taxes. And um, that can be done each year. And for people who don't know about it, um, you can file your taxes, of course, um, amend your taxes up to three years uh, previously. Um, so anyone who hasn't had the chance to apply for the circuit breaker could potentially do that. Um, in the future when they're thinking about readjusting their taxes. And that amount is up to $1,179 um, this year that a senior can get back um, from their real estate taxes. So I think that would be 
a really good program to have um, in the fall um, to follow up on that, making people aware. Um, the other thing is we're going to have a health fair um, during the month of the Spirit of Shrewsbury in September. Um, the health fair is going to be on September 8th. It's on a Thursday between 12 and 4. And we're going to have um, vendors that serve the senior community, uh, people from, from housing, long-term care, um, services such as um, uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy to do balance assessments, um, vision, hearing, all that sort of stuff, durable medical equipment. Um, and in conjunction with that, um, Holly has, um, has organized um, a program called Think Ahead. Um, during another week on another Thursday, it's going to be in the evening from 6 to 9, and that's to focus on the over 50 population to help them get ready for understanding Medicare and different things that they should be looking at. Um, and lastly, we're getting into more um, other kinds of programs. We're doing a Medicare 101 this month. Next month, um, through the RSVP program, through the um, AmeriCorps Seniors. Um, we're going to have Fraud Brigade, a person from Fraud Brigade here to discuss frauds and scams. We're going to have more information on that available. I get calls periodically from people who are trying to understand, you know, is this um, a legitimate kind of, you know, uh, contact that I'm receiving and, you know, helping them understand what they should ignore and, who they should call if they have questions, that sort of thing. Renee, I have a question. Yeah. Everything you've described so far is being held here in the senior center. Mm -hmm. Do you have any mechanism in place for disseminating this information to the homebound people who are unable to come to the senior center? What is the mechanism for that? So every, every program we have, we have videotaped so that it's on the cable TV so that people who are homebound and who are you know, typically watching TV, they can watch those. And for people who are online, um, is that there's a YouTube video that stays there, you know, forever. So, so basically, they have to be watching TV or watching the computer <laughs> to know that such the program is available. But in order to participate, do they have to come here? They don't have to come here to participate, no. How do they do that? Like okay. for, exa for example, if a homebound person wants to file taxes, let's say, they take advantage of the, I know the AARP or whoever sets up things here, but what about homebound? So for filing taxes, you actually have to come here to the center. Um, the AARP people don't, don't visit, um, unfortunately. And, you know, of course we have transportation to bring people who have difficulty with, you know, negotiating you know, getting here. Okay. Um, and we only have so many, like for AARP, there are only so many appointments, so it's a first come, first serve basis as well. Um, and that's advertised well in advance of, um, you know, that activity happening so that people have the opportunity to sign up. Go ahead. Renee, where is the health fair? I want to put that into the minutes. Will it be here? It will be here. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Holly, did you have something? Renee answered it. Oh, good. Go ahead. In addition to that, sometimes there are family members of the senior who might be helping them, and they're welcome also to come to those of course events with them because yeah. then they might follow through then with helping them get so the taxes can, filed. That's correct. They can follow through with that. Of course, that person would have to go back and get their signature for the document and then bring it back. But yes, they could. Thank you. I, I have one other question not directly related, and you don't have to answer this now. Uh, a while back, we had talked about coordinating uh, the outreach programs we have with the services provided by other organizations, uh, India Society, of the churches, and SYFS, and so on. Is that still going on? I mean, do you, here's my, here's my question. You know, I'm a wheels and wheels driver, and I noticed that Somebody has got into a conversation, somebody has telling meals to, and they said they have somebody from their church who comes down and drives them when they need to go to the drugstore or go to go food shopping. Now, 
if that were the case, you could possibly have somebody like that to interface, to help them to come here to participate in these activities or something like that. Is that being considered? So um, we do partner with SYFS. Um, they have a new outreach coordinator that started several months ago and she does on-site hours here. Um, one morning a month, we started with one morning to see how it goes and we can extend that if there's more of a need. Um, I'm gonna be starting again um, library office hours as well as I've been to the housing authority. I've, I've already um, started hours there. Um, almost weekly, um, I have a schedule together that it, it started off kind of informally attending tenant meetings and just going on site and meeting people during the times that they have, have gatherings. Um, but I will be there at several of the buildings um, one day a week. Um, as far as the um, Meals on Wheels and things like that um, and Elder Services, I do a lot of referrals to Elder Services for home care. Um, when I get a call from a resident for um, any, any kind of call, any kind of need, I usually go through a set of questions to kind of find out if there are other unmet needs. And then I talk to them about how Elder Services does full case management and they can see what services that they may um, you know, qualify for and, and may want to have in their home, it's their decision. Basically, it's person-centered care, it's up to the person, whether they want to take advantage of those services that I make them aware of. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If not, we can move on to the next topic, which is the uh, roles and responsibilities. That's actually you. No, it's <laughs> actually Jean. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm new, I'm fairly new, so I had, excuse me, I had a little bit of difficulty trying to understand what my role was here on this board. Um, and I had talked to Sashi as, Sashi as the chair, and he had said that there had been some discussion in the past, and um, there needed to be some identification of what our purpose was, how we factored in, are we a policy board, are we an advisory board. Um, and after some discussion, I did speak with uh, Kevin, the town manager, and he suggested that we talk about bringing this to the board and talking about ways for us to identify what our purposes are, what our, what our role is as a council on aging. Um, Shashi, you have so much more background on this whole issue, maybe you could identify what brought this on initially. Well, historically, go ahead. Please. Um, where did this document come from? There isn't any um, citation. It mentions IBIT twice, which would refer to a previous uh, document. Let, but me, there let, is let no me answer that question. I just wanted to finish my question. Yes, go, go ahead. What, you wanted to I wanted to know where, you know, oh, okay. from where you got this document. Here's, here's, here's the history. If you look at the town bylaw section 4L, you will see that there's a description of the Council on Aging and how it was how it was created in 1972, 50 years ago. At that time, the Council on Aging consisted of seven volunteers. The, it spells out that it should be town residents, voters, and all this kind of stuff. But that was 50 years ago. But then the state made the Council on Aging into a municipal department with a director. So what happened to those seven members? Nobody, nowhere has defined what it is. Nobody says, okay, now these seven members are going to be called the Council on the Aging Board. Before, in 1972, those seven members were the Council on Aging. There's nothing else. So essentially, this document originated from me. I wrote a first draft. I gave it to, because she's got experience in, uh, in uh, 
you know, boards and committees, she's got a lot more experience in that area. So I gave it to Jean and Louise and we talked about it and wordsmithed it somewhat. <coughs> and by a, a number of different paths, devious paths, she ended up discussing the matter with Kevin. So this document does not exist anywhere except on my computer. Well, it mentions Ibid twice, which would mean referring to a previous document. No, no, no. If you, re if you read oh, Ibid, does the previous, 21. if you recall, yeah. if you look at this, this law yeah. bylaw is based upon the recommendations of the Council on Aging New Director's Manual. Look, if you look at the yes. first paragraph. I don't know that I'm looking at the paragraph. It's like the third, fourth paragraph down. If you see that, it's, it's bylaw. So every time I felt that so I should incorporate something. The, is this from the, the Council Correct. on Aging New Director's Manual? Correct. That's all I wondered. I just right. wanted to know where okay. this came from. Judy, go ahead. Can we get a copy of the Council on Aging New Director's Manual? Yes, Holly sent them out to everyone. But if you go to the... No, I got a copy of this draft. But no, no, no. The, it's based the document on the itself. of the Council on Aging New Director's Manual, public, blah, 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 January 2nd, 2016. Judy, all you have to go do is go onto the MCOA web website and you can download that document. That's why I didn't send it out to everyone. Okay. But Holly sent it out to everyone a long time ago. I, mean, I think that was prior. I, it was prior I to you. It was. It's prior to you being here. I, uh, right. Was it sent out via email or? It, it was. It would have been prior to you too. Uh, this right. is. I can. All right. If you want, I will send it out to the board again because. I have a copy on my hard drive at home. I can send it out to the rest okay, of the board. Okay, well, if it's on but the Mass, Mass Council on Aging website, I, I guess I can download it. But if you have it easily available and you can circulate it, that would be yeah, I'll, I'll send it out to everyone. Thank you. Now, I also referenced the executive order EOEA document, which is also, you can go to the EOEA website and download it. Uh, but that's a very big document. And you, you can't take a lot of work to get through it, but it kind of talks about intergenerational activities and all that kind that of stuff. So you might want to look at that too. But yes, this is just my opinion, my draft, that I was just as something, as talking paper, so to speak, so we can initiate a discussion about updating the town bylaw. But I, from what Jean is telling me, that the town manager isn't ready to do that yet. Correct? So Go ahead. Quick point of clarification again. So this document is not from the Council on Aging New Directors Manual. No, it's not. It's right. derived you, from that. You've added to it. No, I took pieces out of it and created this document. Okay. And you've added some of your own? Yes. That's my question. Yes. Or oh, it's not just, just mine, it's hers too. This is an official document of the Council on Aging um, statewide. This is, this is a core, and you've added your own thoughts to it. Is that correct? I just want to know how official this is. It's not official at all. Okay. It's not official. It's just question. a compilation of what we thought this board should look like in terms of where we fit into the structure of the town. Gotcha. Um, when I, and it, the word bylaws exists in here, and I think we need to change that. Um, the town manager was not encouraging us to try to change bylaws because changing the bylaws of the town means going through the legal process and the legislative process. Uh, but he's willing to look at any other kind of language that we want to use, whatever we choose to call it. I wrote down some things that we found them. Um, but that would just facilitate an opportunity for us to know what all our roles are and what we should and should not be doing. Go ahead. Long time ago, many years ago, we had tried to put together a set of bylaws for the Council of Aging Board. And in uh, fact, I ran into not too long ago among all my piles of stuff I have. <coughs> But and they just didn't go anywhere and they could follow it through. So I think that at that time we were thinking the very same thing. We need some kind of document that really describes who and what we are, what our responsibilities are, that kind of thing. Um, because what's in the, the bylaw, the town bylaw, really doesn't describe 
Well, 50 years ago. Laurie, you had a question? So I'm wondering, would, what would we call this document then? And maybe a statement as opposed to a so bylaw, or? This is, this is the problem. This was intended, as you can see from Article 1, yeah. I intended this when I wrote it to replace the existing bylaw. But what the town manager wants to do is to take this document and make it into what you well, we could call it guidelines. Yeah. We could call it definition and structure of the council on aging. We could choose our own language as long as we don't say bylaws because that brings in legal issues. We could even make it a department policy, a policy document, which brings up something that I've been thinking about. It may be time, you want to think about it, it may be time for us to have a policy subcommittee headed up by one of the board members. The board member should then create this committee to redo and take ownership of all the policies, make sure they're up to date, give them a serial number, get them approved, and make it put it back on the web on the web page where they belong so the public can know what our our policies are. So we don't have to vote on it or think about it now since we're short on time. But it's something for you to think about for the next meeting. Go ahead. Since I'm still new, I did read about subcommittees. And do we have other subcommittees right now? We do not. But we used to have different subcommittees at one time. But with COVID and everything being shut down, Essentially, I think Louise is more up to date, and she was, when you were chair, I think we used to have a bunch of subcommittees. Yes, there were subcommittees at the time. <clears throat> we were doing different kinds of documents, and we were trying to upgrade all the documents that were here. By the way, this section on subcommittees here is straight out of the director's manual. This whole section, uh, they tell you to create subcommittees. They did recommend that you create sub subcommittees. Uh, the only thing that I put in here that you might want to eliminate is term limits. I feel that nobody should get too comfortable and stay on forever. That, that's the only reason I put that in. But the, the board can decide if you want to take that out. Judy. Um, I'm just taking the opportunity to express that I would be very interested I'm sorry? Just taking the opportunity to express that I would be very interested in serving um, on the policy subcommittee. Oh, okay. As, so as an attorney, I'm good at reading this. Stuff. Should we take a vote on <laughs> that and make you the official that's up to head me. of? I'm just expressing the interest. It, it's, it's right at my own. Yeah, that's good. Jean? I would second your. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I was volunteering to chair it, but, but if you will chair it, I would love to be on the committee. Good. Right here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and, and I also, I need to be on the committee. Yes, yes. she needs to be on the committee, yes. definitely. That was Kevin's recommendation. Mm -hmm. Can we get that? So, will somebody okay. make a motion that we create a subcommittee? Why did you make a motion? To, uh, so moved. to well, well tell, we help to, me here. What are the words you want to put in? That we make a policy subcommittee consisting of Judy, Jean, Betsy, and, and Holly. And Holly. So with Judy as to, the chair. And the cut sub the purpose of the policy <laughs> subcommittee <laughs> was charged with uh, 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 uh. No side discussions, please. Well we we are wondering uh, I believe the subcommittee should only consist of board members. Sorry, well, I, I believe yes and no, because there are a lot of smart people sitting out there. You can you can bring in anybody you want. In the past, the policy, the board members, the committee members weren't always board members. You usually had a board member chairing it, but we had the entire population participating in the activity. Go ahead. Uh, I I agree with her. She I think the board subcommittee should be board members only, and the the director would always be staff to the subcommittee. Well, I'm going to read from your draft. Unless a subcommittee member is also a board member, 
Subcommittee members shall not be permitted to participate in the, uh, in the deliberations of the board. Oh, no, okay, sorry, take it back. I've been directed that I do have the ability to be on this. Oh no, that's that's not the issue here. If we have, if we have somebody else, let's say somebody else who's a member, who's a senior, who comes to you, he wants to express his opinions or he wants to give you his inputs. Uh, I think we should have a mechanism in place to draw upon his experience or her experience. Some people have a lot of work experience out there. And we don't want to cut that off. We'll leave it as, as the motion as, as stated, and then which was uh, Judy Jean. Create a policy subcommittee Holly. consisting of yeah. those folks that Judy is the chair. I have a question, Holly. I, uh, I think you could be an observer, but I think isn't the board a separate entity from the COA? Yes. It should be a separate entity from the COA. It's charged with, with reviewing policy, creating policy, edit, all that kind of stuff, and generating a standardized format for all our policy. Go ahead. I've been advised that I have the right to, because it has something to do with the COA and the senior center, that I can, I should be part of this subcommittee. Advice, thank you. I'm sorry. My I'm sorry, sorry. My supervisors. Alex. My su my direct supervisors. Which I'm. Uh, um, um. Kristen Loss and okay. Kevin Mizrahi. Okay, thanks. But would you be a voting member of the subcommittee? Because that, I think, absolutely. Crosses. So that's the process. I think. That's Go ahead. The problem is, that it's not necessarily a voting document. It's a working document right. in which right. I am part of, because it has something to do with the senior center and the council on aging department. Excuse me. I think the mechanism would be, the committee would create a, a working draft which would then be presented to the full board and the full board would vote on it, whether to accept, reject, or change. Am I correct in saying that? Go ahead. I think we need to move the question. I think this is a draft. It is a draft. Yes, it's absolutely. cast in stone. If we develop a committee with the board members and Holly, we are, the way our bylaw currently reads, we are all the council on aging. Right. So, we're not violating any law, so. Go ahead. Am I misunderstanding? I thought Holly was part of the board. No. Okay, so that's not, she. Holly is, is director of the COA department. Right. Now, this is where, this is what I was trying to clarify here. The relationship between the director's office and the COA board is not defined anywhere. That's the problem. And I was attempting to make a def definition of that here and put that into the town bylaw, but apparently that's difficult to do. So instead, we're going to create a policy document and hopefully the policy document will incorporate a lot of these things and will identify what the board does and what the COA department director does and stop. There are two parallel organizations within the Council on Aging. I would personally think that it would be important for Holly to be on that subcommittee, even. Oh, absolutely. Even because I think the input. Definitely. Is incredible. Because she's because responsible for carrying, implementing whatever. She definitely has to be on that including committee. Including understanding all the legal aspects so, and everything. So I really think that that right. would be very so important. So now and we have a subcommittee. Yeah. I'm sorry? Just remaking the motion. And I, I probably also knows uh, if it's a policy subcommittee, what policies are and are not written as to date. So. All right. So. So. Uh, all those. Uh, you, you seconded it, right? Yes. Did you get that? Yes, I did. Okay, good. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any objections? Motion is carried. Wow, this is great. So, um, thank you, Louise. It is 10:15. So, um, so the next one on so under directors who report programs events. So the volunteer appreciation. I appreciate everybody that was able to attend that. I hope you enjoyed yourself. We um, received a lot of positive feedback, especially since that was the real 
first volunteer appreciation that we've had since I've been here. Um, and I look forward to doing many, many more. Um, for, for sure, we couldn't even open our doors if we didn't have the volunteers. And I was just wondering if anybody had any feedback or anything else like that so I could use it for going forward. I thought it was a great day. Um, the food was delicious. I, for those of you that weren't with us, they did a fine job. Lakeside, I think, yep. is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Lakeway. Lakeside Grill. Lakeside Grill. Yep. Um, did a wonderful job with the food, and the entertainment was terrific. Great. Yeah, it really, the, the, the choice of that entertainment really kept the crowd very engaged. Great. Any other? Go ahead. I wasn't able to attend, but I loved the pictures that I saw from the event. I thought they really captured activity and people and having fun. Thank you. Yeah, Thank fun. you. Yeah, it was it was truly fun. Um, it, I have, it's been a while since I put on an apron, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> and the color was great. It Thank was. you. Yes. <laughs> I, I know we're running out of time. Very quickly, could you mention the security system? Yep, I'm gonna to get to that. I'll have enough time. So, so I'll just mention no at 10:45. 10:45. We have to be done. We have half an hour. Yeah, 10:45. Yeah. Um, so, thank you for the feedback on the volunteer appreciation. I know that it was fun, and my staff enjoyed getting out of the office and engaging um, because we don't always get a chance to do something like that. Um, so I just want to talk quickly a little bit about the spirit of Shrewsbury for the month of September. I know Renee mentioned a little bit, but I'm just going to give you some dates to think about. <clears throat> and all of the dates, all of the programs that we're talk, we talk that I mentioned right here, I'm always looking for feedback, um, support, ideas, all of those things. So for the month of September, what we decided to do is, since it's the spirit of Shrewsbury, we really kind of focus in on what, it, what, what does that mean. So with that, we have put together three events outside of our normal events that run all the time. So on 9-8, as, men as uh, Renee mentioned, is the health fair. And we'll, we'll provide additional information as we get it. We're still in the beginning stages. So 9-8 is the health fair. 9-12, which is a Monday, will be the 22nd celebration of the Senior Center. <clears throat> and one of my thoughts around that is to really involve Shrewsbury um, people. So I am planning to invite our ukulele club that meets here weekly to play music as everybody is walking in so everybody can see some of the activity. Um, it's, it, you know what I love about that club, and I'll just, this is a little side note, is it started off like three people and now there's 11. Um, and they're absolutely amazing. Yeah, I didn't even know ukulele sounded like that. Um, but one of the other things too is I reached out to the Shrewsbury Corral. So they're the chorus. Um, for the town of Shrewsbury and I did send them an invitation so they are reviewing my request and will get back to me in the next week or so. Um, but again I just wanted, I thought that it was important to bring Shrewsbury into the events that we were doing. Um, so hopefully that will go through, if not I welcome other ideas. And on 9:22, as Renee also mentioned, is the Think Ahead. So it is for anybody in Shrewsbury who is 50 to 150 uh, to come here and so far um, AARP will be here and they'll be talking about the services that they provide in general, okay? Um, so what AARP is all about. I have sent an invitation to The Shine out of Milford uh, to hopefully get somebody coming here so they can talk about what Shine is all about. And I have also sent a request over to Elder Services of Worcester because they do more than just provide our Meals on Wheels. They provide so many other things. So it's a three hour, that, that particular one, that's a three hour of event on the 22nd from six to nine. Uh, we'll have light refreshments served and God bless you. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying to, you know, provide the information so people understand and those that are caregiving, um, you know, either for their parents or grandparents or their grandchildren, you know, just to come out and kind of get that 
information that they might not know that they need. And then what I plan on doing is also putting that into some sort of working document so people that can't attend that evening, they'll be able to come and pick those, like a packet up of all of that information. So that's what I have going on for the month of September. Does anybody have any questions? What is the official weekend of Spirit of Shrewsburg? I wasn't sure. I think it is, let me just look at my calendars. I believe it's the weekend of, it's either the 17th or the 24th. Does anybody, does anybody else know? It's usually the same weekend. Didn't um, we make September, I'm sorry, Shashi, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Didn't we make September 22nd think ahead because 22 was 22 years? No, that was something different. Okay. That was a different okay. conversation. So that would be that yeah, weekend, the 24th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the culmination. Yes. So, but isn't the weekend before that? Is the parade the same weekend or is it two weekends? They're usually at the same weekend. Yeah. Okay. And that's when they have the tea here for the after the parade for all those senior, elder, elderly seniors. <laughs> Senior, seniors. Uh, so it's always a nice, uh, nice area, I think. So watch for the ad advertising of the tea on that Sunday. It's going to be very nice here at the senior center. Uh, Alex, is there a, a tentative time for this uh, health fair on September 8th? So what we're thinking is like 12 to 4. So again, all of those are still moving parts, uh, but we plan to solidify that. I would guess by the next meeting, we'll have that. Are we ready to move on? We are. So the next item on the agenda is to talk about the security system. Um, approximately four to six months ago, and I apologize, I don't have the date right off my head, um, well, last fiscal year 21, I put in, in a capital request to have a security system put into the senior center, which um, it involves the security cameras inside and outside of the senior center, as well as fob systems all on all of the doors that automatically open at 8 o'clock in the morning and automatically close at 4.30. Um, and there are security cameras. Uh, in two locations in the lobby as well as four of the outside of the doors that have the parameter of all four sides of the building. Four? Five. You have a question, Louise? Does the one at the far door, does it show the parking lot? Yes. Good. Yep. So if you are walking outside of the front main entrance, it shows the entire front garden, that part of the parking lot over there, as well as the corner. When you exit the building on the side entrance, um, that some people confuse with the front entrance, uh, it does the same for that area. And then we have another one over here um, that so we can monitor the outside by um, the kitchen area. And then we have another one over here that does the patio area. What is this hooked up to the police station? Um, I, I, I'm not exactly sure where all of the videos go, but I do know that IT in the public facilities um, has it, so my guess is most likely, uh, but I don't have the answer to that. And we had had some discussions quite a few years ago. We've been trying to get the security for 10 years. Um, that um, if, they, if they had, like, the police station, they only kept the film for a certain number of days or something like that. Do you know anything about that? I really don't. Um, we're still going through the process of even being able to really regulate the doors, so I don't have that information, but I can certainly um, inquire over it. I'm just curious. Things come up. I have a question. You don't know. Mm -hmm. The security system, who is somebody in the office monitoring it? I mean, how do they know if this needs attention? 
So just as with the other buildings in town, um, the video is there and most of it is for in case an incident happens. So we have some kind of um, video feedback that we can go by and you know if somebody falls, how did they fall? Was it something that you know was it an individual reason or was it something that was you know a crooked carpet or something else like that? So we have those. So, you know, those kind of things. So there's nobody watching it 24 seven. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, and I should, oh, may I? So the FOB system, what's great about the FOB system, just so everybody knows, is that it tells us who's been in the building and at what times, especially when the door is closed. So um, one of the, when we were talking with the company that came in to put the FOB system inside of the senior center, they asked if we wanted one on the senior center door, which is one of the reasons why that sign, Gene, as you had mentioned, and now we took, we took that down, is um, just people coming and going into an office area where you know there's a lot of delicate information that's being spoken about quite frequently. Um, so the office door is on a fob. Um, I myself and um, I, I believe I'm the only one that has 24/7 access to the building, but the rest of the staff can't get in with a two-hour radius either before or after the building closes in case they had to come in for something. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you have a policy, or maybe you're working on a policy, of what, how to respond to an emergency system that, as a result of, for instance, if somebody were to fall in the parking lot, what happens next? Or so, somebody is trying to, doing something illegal. So if somebody falls in the parking lot, at, you know, it's all about being alerted. Somebody's got to come in and let us know, and the first thing we do is we call 911. That, that has happened before. There really isn't a policy. It's, it's pretty much around the board. If you're in a restaurant and you see somebody joking, there is a you know, way about it. So we, we follow that. Um, as far as like any kind of emergency, you know, if, there, if we had to do an emergency lockdown, what needs to happen is I need to call. Um, there's a couple of phone calls that I make, and then they put the, the facility on lockdown. So then they lock the facility. No, the reason I ask is about three years ago, way before COVID, way before we had, I had somebody, I, there was somebody who walked into the kitchen and started a political harangue of the people who were sitting around the table at the coffee club, you know, Rogers Coffee Club. Mm -hmm. And he just carried on being verbally abusive, yelling, carrying on political commentary, say, call, telling us that we were all unpatriotic and all this kind of stuff, harangued everybody for about 10 minutes and then stormed out of the building. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the kind of scenario I hope we're able, it doesn't happen again, and if it does, I hope that your security system will alert you somehow. Go ahead. So, in a situation like that, and I have been in situations that are similar, it's up to me to try to diffuse that, and if, it, if I'm not able to do that, I then do go and call 911 and have somebody come in to help. Okay. Any other questions? Judy? Uh, no. Alex, go ahead. It, it does seem, maybe you have this in an emergency document of phone numbers, because you're not always here. You can't possibly be. So if the air conditioning quits in August, who do they call yep. for a plumbing problem likewise? We do have those numbers at the desk, and each staff member is equipped with those phone calls. Perfect. Any other questions? So the next item on the agenda is the marketing plan, and I would like to request at the board that we move it off into the June because it, it is quite lengthy, um, and I would like the feedback. What I would like to request, if I may, is that if anybody has any individual comments about the marketing plan, if you can send them to me, because this will give me an option, uh, or an opportunity, I'm sorry, to look at the marketing plan, make those adjustments, and then bring those um, um, comments to the board next month to, prop to try to shorten the time that we spend on it. But it is super important. 
Um, the marketing plan I am putting into all of our performance appraisals that myself and the staff are part of and it, it, it will be and already has become a working document that you, we use um, which is especially good for um, the, the grants that we do all year. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you plan to coordinate this with the friends? So the marketing plan, if you look at it, it talks about partnerships, strengths, weaknesses, and things like that. And I am pretty sure that I did mention the friends of <coughs> group in one of the partnerships um, on one of the pages. But again, without actually flipping through it, just because we are that this is going to take more than 15 minutes to talk about. Um, but the Friends of is one of our supporters. So I, I'm pretty positive I put it into the marketing plan. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Uh, under, can we move on? Are you, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Uh, under new business, not really new business, but well, first of all, I think our old business questions have already been answered, right? You agree, Louise? We talked about the security thing, and we talked about the friends, uh, in the meeting with the friends. Those were the two items that we carried over that were unresolved. I don't think we had anything else. All right. So one thing that we have to do now is, now that we have a policy committee, uh, the policy committee has to schedule a meeting to elect a chair somebody who's going to be head of that committee and figure out a plan forward. The motion right. included Judy as the chair. Oh, it did? Yes. All right. So you're going to schedule it. You're going to call everybody. You're going to schedule this meeting and go forward the from there. Good. 48 hours. I will email them. Renee? Um, I meant to mention um, in my outreach report um, that I'll put under old business, if I could. Um, so the outreach survey, uh, which went out um, to 5,500 households, we have over 2,000 responses. That's incredible. Wow. It's wow. unbelievable. And I thought that I would have a That's report great. for June. <laughs> I was figuring a few hundred responses, you know, marketing 101, 1 to 2% response. <laughs> um, so we are mobilizing volunteers to input that data. Um, so that I could hopefully generate a report in a few months. Awesome. Um, and I am looking for volunteers. If anybody would like to help enter data, <laughs> anyone who hears here or on the board, um, it would be very much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, you see, this is exactly my point that I was trying to make before when you talked about this committee. There are a lot of smart people out there. <laughs> But she's talking about the board. No, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about members who, who have experience in, you know, analyzing surveys and creating samples and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of people out there who can know how to do that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. If I need assistance with that, once we compile all the information, I will call out. Right. Thanks. Alex? I have another item. I guess it's old business. And that relates to updating the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about that in the past. I just wondered where that was. If I might. So as everybody knows, the COA is probably one of the only departments that has a strategic plan that was created, I think, and distributed in 2018 or 19. I think 2019 is what it was. And then it went to 2023. So that was actually one of my performance goals. But since then, the town has just decided to do a town-wide strategic plan. So they, what they requested was, you know, obviously don't stop working on those things that were already put into place, but don't spend any more time revising the current marketing plan. So, and, and like a couple of those things would be um, improving relationships with the housing authority and partnerships and things like that. But what they didn't want me to do is spend any more time going line item to line item, line item, just keeping it in the back of the mind, checking in on it, and making sure that you know my, myself, the staff, the board, the volunteers, everybody continues to work on the things that are in the current model. So having read the old strategic plan online, and also knowing 
you know, actually looking through all the questions for the strategic plan for the town. And you have this survey that you have 2,000 people who've responded. Is there going to be any melding of that information? Will they have access to the information from this? So, so part of if you part of the strategic plan that's already that had already been um, configured mentioned making the marketing plan. So the marketing plan is where I have myself and my staff working on SWOT analysis, making sure that we understand our strengths, weaknesses, um, and things like that. So all of that information will definitely be incorporated into the new strategic plan that they do with always having the old information from the old strategic plan because it's a working document. So I, I think what you're asking is whether or not we would still be providing that information that would be available to anybody to look at, and the answer would be yes. Is that, did I answer Renee, your question, Lori? I, I'm not sure I answered, hold on. I'm not sure um, I answered answer Lori's question. I mostly am interested, I don't know what their timeline is for when they're going to be finishing the strategic plan. Oh. But in, just short of that, mm -hmm. We've got a gold mine right here of data that's that I'm they don't have. And so that's the, the question I'm asking is, is the town going to get the benefit of this data before they finish their strategic plan, which includes us? So this data is definitely part of the working, like as I mentioned, marketing plan. I, I've already been, I've already sat down with the new consultants for the new strategic plan and they'll be incorporating in that. What basically they were asking me is what are the services that, you know, the council and aging provides, what are the services that the senior center provides. So they're still, I think, configuring the main outline of the strategic plan, but yes, all of that information will certainly be put in. Um, as a matter of fact, if this, this document right here, if you were to open that document, and when I say marketing plan, if you would open that document and follow the link, there's a couple of links from like Elder Services of Worcester that did um, a few surveys themselves. So you can't get that in a paper copy, but if the information was needed, we could certainly forward it. So all of that will definitely be included because as she mentioned, 5,500 households with people 60 plus, and we've received almost 2,000 back. We can't not include that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I was intending the survey not only to understand, um, you know, what 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 seniors are using the services, um, activities here at the senior center, things like that, but also to use it to update um, my senior center with um, current information if they provided it, and um, also as part of the marketing plan, um, it makes the it makes people aware in those households even if they didn't answer. The survey, hopefully, what we do have to offer here. So, and I have had um, in the comments. I don't get to read all of the surveys, but in some of them that I've read, um, people have said, "I wasn't aware that you offered such and such, and I'm going to, you know, look into participating in that." So, um, it provides a number of different um, different uh, types of um, opportunities. We've even heard we didn't know Shrewsbury had a senior center, so this is a good this is a good thing. Oh, we didn't know you were open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other subjects? That, anything that we need to talk about before we run out of time? We've got five more minutes. Yes. I think they're ready to come in. Yeah. That's okay. They're they're always a little bit early. Um, in and maybe you do this normally, but I'd be interested in a breakdown of attend people who come to the senior center and the activities that are here. Mm -hmm. Are they categorized in some fashion? And could you give a breakdown of the categories and the numbers that attend or that participate in each category that is a huge amount of Actually, job. that data is being collected by my senior center, I believe. Yep. Okay. Yes. When they yes. sign in, they select what they're doing here, what they're doing here. But the question is, I have never seen a report from my senior center. Is and anyone else? So, if I might, so the yeah. My Senior Center is one of the main, actually, what's great about My Senior Center is when I file for um, the formula grant that we receive every year, the My Senior Center software people behind the scenes actually put in a button at the very bottom and it generates my report for me. I almost don't even have to do anything. 
but that's why you see quite frequently when you're coming into the senior center the signs do you do scan your card today or in um, so we try to get it in at least twice a year to everybody that gets the newsletter how important it is because it a gives us information who's in the building and God forbid there be an emergency and there has been next of kin so we can make those phone calls but it also tells us just like you're asking and I can definitely generate that for um, for the June meeting is who's coming what what programs are they attending um, this is a lot of my senior center when we were shut down for COVID um, the staff did an amazing job of putting all the input in every single person that we talked to you know there was like 1700 names that we put in by hand of the people that we talk to. So we have all of that data too. So by far, that software is um, our diamond for sure. Well, and it seems like it would be good input and a good way to track uh, how we're meeting our objectives and mm -hmm. goals uh, when we update this strategic plan. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. One of the things that I do is I get to monitor how many people are coming into, let's just say this room holds 200 people, okay? If I, I, it allows me to monitor the programs that are happening here, and if I need the space for something, and let's just say, um, and I'm just gonna say bocce ball, just let's say bocce was happening in here, but only two people were coming, that's not a good use of this particular space. So when it, the space is needed, I would then go to the next, you know, group of people so we could get more people here. Um, and always finding a resource for the people that I need to move out. So absolutely, we use that more than you know. But what I'll do is for the June minutes, I'll just give everybody a little bit of breakdown. We'll give ages, um, the age ranges and things like that so you can see it. And it also shows us how many people from out of town come in. From not in Shrewsbury, I I don't no, I I wouldn't feel comfortable throwing out a number and only keeping in mind that we're just getting to be normal again, you know. And I hate to use the word normal, but um, and more and more people, um, we're hearing that you know they attend other senior centers, and because some of the people that attend this senior center go to other senior centers, they're all talking. So and this is what every senior center wants because. I don't want to offer everything that North Road does or Westboro and Worcester. I want to make sure that we're providing enough opportunities and um, reasons for, you know, to socialize outside of just our senior center. So I don't know the number off my head. Well, is there anything else that we need to talk about today? We've got two more minutes left. Uh, if not, will someone make a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Anybody has anything else to say? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.